I've been pondering different types of riders recently. Who rides what and why? Now, for the most part, typical riders in each segment actually make sense to me. But the two categories that don't are the crossover and race replica buyers. It seems to me a lot of them are buying sleds based on what kind of rider they either think they are or want to be, not the kind of rider they actually are. And there's nothing wrong with that. Buy what you want. Today though, I'm gonna take a little bit deeper look into Polaris' new 2022 XCR850 136 to see what kind of rider should be buying this sled, but also what other kinds of riders this sled will work for. For 2022, the XCR has moved into the Matrix platform. Last season, our Axis-based XCR128 was one of the most popular sleds in our fleet because it offered incredible handling, excellent ride quality, and more than a little bit of bling. You felt cool on it, but more importantly, it worked. The 2022 Matrix-based XCR is all of that, but even better. The one we have here is a 136-850. Out back, you'll find Polaris's familiar Pro CC skid frame, but in beefed up trim stronger pull rods, front torque arm, and rails that are also tipped up at the back, aluminum coupler blocks with cross shaft, double limiter straps, and a four-wheel rear axle are all direct carryovers from Polaris's actual cross-country race sled. Up front, you'll find the familiar double-A arm setup Polaris is now calling the Matrix front suspension. It is the same as the VR1, which means it offers the same class-leading ride quality and handling. Speaking of ride quality, Walker Evans' two-inch high and low-speed compression adjustable velocity shocks are among the highest performance shock absorbers in the industry and are spec'd in all four locations. Other upgrades over a VR1 include a solid jack shaft, the stealth racing disc brake setup with performance pads, a race handlebar with taller riser, and a magnetic tether. The 7S display does not come standard on the XCR, but it is available as an option. Finally, the reason this XCR is a 136 instead of a 137 is because it features a race spec 252 pitch track and driveline. The track comes in three flavors, a 125 Ice Ripper XT, a 135 Cobra, or a 16 Cobra. For 2022, the XCR is available in three different color schemes that can be customized during snow check. The red, white, and blue, Merca. The color scheme we have here has been getting a ton of attention, but in my opinion, the red and black with black tunnel and red spindles and rails is one of the best looking snowmobiles on the snow. So that's what makes up a 2022 Matrix-based XCR. Now we need to talk about what it's like to ride, what does it do well, and what could be improved. Then finally, we need to talk about who should be buying a sled like this. In terms of ride quality, the XCR136 is the best riding Matrix-based sled this season. Now the VR1 is still excellent, but because you have more control over those sweet walker velocity shocks, you can tune the XCR more precisely to ride exactly how you want it to. After many days swapping back and forth between the VR1 and XCR, the difference is subtle, but it is noticeable. When set up on the softer side, the small chatter bumps simply disappear, along with medium-sized whoops and rollers. Soft settings will allow the sled to bottom on big hits though, which isn't bad if you're only bottoming once or twice a ride. If you do want to run big bumps like Levi Lavalley, just stiffen things up and you'll be in complete control pounding the biggest whoops. Handling is on par with a VR1, which is to say that it's as close to perfect as any snowmobile has ever been. It corners incredibly flat, but has no trouble wading the outside ski, which provides serious bite that translates into precise, predictable, and confidence-inspiring handling. The joke around the snow tracks office is that this is a sled for lazy people. You don't have to try at all to go faster than everybody else. That is, unless you want to go way faster. Which brings me to ergonomics. The only difference between a VR1 and an XCR ergonomically speaking is the taller riser. The narrow seat gas tank area of the XCR is excellent for getting way off the side of the sled when you want to rail corners like you're an Indy car but the seat isn't too sticky either, so moving side to side is effortless. Basically, ergonomics here are fantastic for ultra aggressive riding, or if you wanna to tone it down a little. Now I wanna talk about who should be riding a VR1. What type of rider is this model better suited for versus the VR1? And the answer might surprise you. I'm a 40 year old washed up snowcross racer. I like to fancy myself an aggressive rider and in my younger years, I definitely was. But in my 28 years of riding snowmobiles, I have never bent or broken the suspension on a stock trail sled while riding aggressively. I have also never overheated a brake. This means that even though I likely fall among the more aggressive percentage of riders out there, even I don't need an XCR with its beefed up suspension and racing brake setup. 
The truth is, there is a very small segment of riders who can or will ever use an XCR to its full potential. But as we've said many times before, Polaris understands and listens to their customers, which is why the XCR, while more than capable of surviving the abuse the hardest core riders will dish out, can also be softened up to ride amazing for the rest of us. Does a guy like me need an XCR? No, a VR1 would be more than capable of handling my style of riding. But an XCR retails for only about $400 more than a VR1 when similarly spec'd. So if it's my money, I'm buying the XCR. I get all the extra race-inspired stuff I'll never really use and the maximum amount of cool factor that gives my ego a solid pat on the back. And there's nothing wrong with that at all.